Hey guys, welcome back to Scoot School. My name is Celeste, I'm an AmeriCorps educator here, and today's topic is a lesson that we like to call Amazing Adaptations. So we're we'll going over some of the amazing ways the girls are surviving out in the ocean and what characteristics help them to do this. So for this lesson, I'm going to introduce you to some really cool specimens and showing you what I'm talking about, and also introducing some new vocabulary words for some of you. So I'm going to start off with kind of the root word of our presentation here, adaptation. An adaptation can be a couple different things, but if you look at that root word of it, adapt, it's how an animal survives and thrives in its environment. There can be two main types of adaptations, morphological or behavioral. So we're going to talk about mostly morphological um, adaptations today. And those are adaptations where an animal has changed a characteristic about itself. So it's a physical trait. There are behavioral adaptations, which is their behaviors. We'll get more into that later on for this class too. The morphological adaptations, we think about as a turtle. One of the best ways people can identify them is that they have a shell. So they are reptiles, they've got a lot of characteristics, like they're cold-blooded, they've got scales, and they are gonna also have those shells if they are a turtle. So I do have a sea turtle shell here today. This is the shell of a Kemp's Ridley sea turtle. You can see it's very nice and hard. And that's the reason they have these, is for protection from predators. But this back shell, this is what would be on the back of the sea turtle, is called a carapace. It's kind of like they're carrying it on their back. So this carapace would be right flush against his skin and make sure any predators coming from the top here cannot actually get in there and protect themselves from it. And if you've ever wanted to know what they're made out of, you can look on the inside today. It is made out of bone. So if you want to fill maybe your rib bone or your back bone, the same kind of bones make up the sea turtle shell, but they're all fused together. So you can see inside this shell here, here's his spine, his vertebral column, and also all of his ribs fused together right there. So they have the carapace. They also do have what's known as a plastron. So this is the bottom shell here. They do have shells on the top and on the bottom to make sure they've got that protective armor. So the plastron is also made out of bone. So if you want to see what the inside of the plastron looks like, Kind of like this. So these bone layers, they're all kind of fused together to make that protective layer. And it's called a plastron because it's kind of like it's plastered there on that sea turtle's belt. So you can see here I do have the carapace on top and the plastron on the bottom. This is how they fit together. So if you're looking at a sea turtle, this is what a shell is going to look like. And there is a connected part on the side and there's the bridge. They are connected together when the sea turtle is living. But you may notice how flat this looks. It's kind of like a pancake. That's a very common characteristic for sea turtles. They want a nice flat shell. And the reason for that is they do live out in the ocean. So when they're swimming through the ocean, they want to be able to glide through the water very easily. You can see how nice and flat this shell is. As that sea turtle is moving through it, all that water can just glide over his back. This is called hydrodynamic. It's kind of like aerodynamic. So you can give an airplane, they're gliding through the air. Sea turtles are hydrodynamic and gliding throughout the water. So because they do have this very flat shell, they can't get their bodies inside of it. They can't tuck in their flippers or their heads. So those are gonna be always outside the shell while they're moving throughout the ocean. This is different from turtles you may see on land. To show you this, I do have a gopher tortoise shell here. And a gopher tortoise is a tortoise that lives on land. He's kind of a stumpy guy. He's not gonna be a very good swimmer. But he does have this very dome-shaped, pretty wide shell here. It's very heavy. He's not a good swimmer. He'd swing to the bottom if he tried. You can see how he has room to tuck in his whole body there. So he's able to tuck in and hide from predators. The girls can't do that. They're going to want to swim away instead. So I do have the shell of a hawk's bell sea turtle here to bring this back out. That colorful layer on the top there is keratin. So if you want to feel your fingernail, feel what that kind of feels like. Your fingernail is also made out of keratin. But the keratin is how they get their coloration. For a hawk's bill, it's a very pretty color. You can see all these different layers here. And each of those circles is called a scoop. So the scoots here, it's actually what our mascot here at the Sea Turtle Center is and why we call this scoot school. These scoots are modified scales on their backs. We talked about how they are reptiles, so they do have scales on top of their shells and they are made out of that keratin layer. So scoots are very important for a sea turtle because they provide camouflage. So camouflage is how animals hide in their environment and blend into it. They're going to hide from predators they don't want to run into, but also from the food that they're trying to eat. So if you look at the color of a sea turtle shell, you can kind of guess where that sea turtle lives. So for a hawk's bill, they have a very bright, colorful pattern on the back of their shells, and their scoots do overlap and kind of look serrated on the sides. But that is because they like to live in coral reefs, very pretty, colorful areas. They need to be pretty and colorful too, so they can blend in very well. It's very different than the sea turtle we just met, the Kemp's Ridley. 
Kim's Ridley shell is very kind of brown and murky. You can see those scoots on there too. Their keratin has that dark murky color because they blend into dark murky water, like the water you would find in the Gulf of Mexico. So camouflage is very important for all animals, especially sea turtles out in the wild. But they do have a little help sometimes to even improve their camouflage more. So I do have a loggerhead sea turtle shell I'm going to bring out today to show you this too. You see it looks a bit different than the other two that we already met. So this loggerhead shell is a pretty convenient size. One day loggerheads can be about four to five feet long, so this one didn't quite get there. You can see he's got this nice kind of orange coloration to his scoots, kind of that sandy color. So you can guess what he tried to blend into. On the bottom of the ocean where he's walking around, he wants to be orange to match that sand. But if you look even closer, you're going to notice he has some friends on his back. And these are barnacles. So there are barnacles that were hitching a ride on this shell, moving throughout the ocean with this loggerhead sea turtle. So animals that live on the back of a sea turtle shell are called epibiota. And that word epibiota, epi stands for on top, and biota stands for life. So these are animals that are quite literally living on the back of sea turtle shells. They're kind of like a big bus moving throughout the ocean with animals on their backs. So these animals can range from things like sea anemones to crabs to barnacles, even to leeches. And a couple of them on their back is not going to be a problem. So if you look at this and you imagine you're seeing it on the bottom of the ocean, it might look like a rock, right? So they can help them hide from predators by camouflaging as a rock. So they're actually okay with having some of these animals on their backs. If we ever see a patient coming in that's completely covered with epibiota, it can mean that something is wrong because that patient was just sitting on the bottom of the ocean, wasn't moving around very much, and we'll remove those animals once they get here to the hospital. But otherwise, just an amount like this is pretty good. And that epibiota is going to help them to camouflage out in the wild too. All right, so we've talked about some of the adaptations sea turtle have in the term, in the form of their shells. They've got shells to protect themselves. They've got keratin on the top to help them to camouflage. And they're going to be using those adaptations out in the wild. But they've got a couple other adaptations too. One of which it helps them to move. So they've got flippers on their feet. If you're ever looking at a sea turtle, you're going to see those broad, flat flippers, and they use them for a couple different reasons. The main reason is to move throughout the water. So they've got two long flippers in the front, and those are going to be like their propellers. They're going to propel themselves through the water up to speeds of 20 miles per hour if they really want to get away from something. And the two shorter ones in the back are kind of like rudders on a boat. So these shorter flippers, I've got the skeleton of one right here, they help them to turn throughout the water and change directions if they want to. But the reason I am calling them a flipper and not a fin is because they are made of bone. So you can see here on this one right here, this is the rear flipper from a green sea turtle. You can see how he has like long little toes. They've got like long toes and long fingers on their flippers, and that's how they're using those strong flippers to move around as well. But thank you guys so much for tuning in today and learning about some of our amazing adaptations for our sea turtles. Stick around tomorrow for some even more and some ways you can help out some sea turtles too. Thank you guys so much for tuning in.